There's the dogs. One, one, two dogs. Another dog. And then two more dogs. All right, guys, I thought I'd update you on this. Uh, I got the pump resealed up because it was leaking out the transmission. Um, this is about, about a year later. And I've had to do a lot of work on this thing. If you guys plan on owning one of these things, an older Hitachi, plan on getting seal kits, um, doing a lot of oil hydraulic related things. I had to redo all the pins on the bucket. Um, everything else is pretty good. I rats had chewed up the uh, all the wiring, so I had to redo the wiring. Uh, this right here thing was broken; it wouldn't hold the door open. Um, got all that fixed. I got it so that uh, at least on the gauges, the uh, I'll clean it up a little bit here. Uh, this is the only gauge that actually works. The air pressure gauge. Um, turn it on. And uh, we get uh, the charge light works, oil pressure works, and uh, over temperature works. I believe the hour meter also works too. It's got a little light that flashes in there or something. Anyways, uh, Okay, so on the inside of this thing, uh, not too many leaks in the hydraulic area. Looks like I've got one hose right there. It's going to go out on it. Um, the actual manifold's pretty good. So I haven't had any problems with those. Um, of course, I already showed you guys the pumps are back in there, and it was filling up with oil and leaking out this little guy right here after about eight hours of running it I start burping oil out of there so I had to reseal those um, I'll show you the engine of course I had redone this part here it was all dented messed up I put a little valve on it guys because it's really nice to be able to dump the pressure off this thing if you have to real quick uh, if you end up with a blown out line or something uh, the other problems i've had with this so i ended up putting a gauge on the diesel line because i ended up having a deal where it kept dying well it turned out to be the return hose had a little flap of rubber that was um, Going bad. I also put a new turbo on it and redid the seals in this. This thing had a leak. It was leaking oil into the alternator, so I had to reseal that. There was a spring check valve that was messed up. And then right down here, somebody had unhooked this valve, this electrical valve. And uh, it took and turned out to be bugs it had gotten into this switch right up in here and this switch when it builds up pressure turns off this valve so that it doesn't build up too much pressure or the relief valve will sit there and keep going out I also uh, put new belts on it I put some new injectors in it um, it still has a problem where it won't start um, it will not start even if it's warm it won't start without starting fluid so I don't know what that's about the other thing I had was there's a little um, check valve or a little relief valve ball inside of this fitting right here and it was totally rusted so that tells me that maybe the injector pump is uh, possibly pretty rusted out as well but I could put an electric lift pump on there and um, you know when you go to start it it pumps up to pressure and I may try that later but I haven't got to that so for today we're gonna dig out the side of this little mountain right here I'm gonna put the dirt behind this tree behind all my junk um, 
So, so we're going to dig out um, all of this. I'm going to move this dirt over behind this stuff. If you guys are needing compressors, I've got lots of these three phase compressors. Um, get a, you know, text me or message me or whatever in the comments if you're looking for a three phase refrigeration compressor. But I'm going to put all the dirt behind here and right here. So that's what I'll show. I'll do a little time lapse video. The uh, tracks are pretty nice on this one, if you're curious. But yeah.
Okay, guys, so, so I'll show you what we got done. Cut the whole thing out, and I didn't get to see, show you guys the time lapse of this, but we went ahead and remember I was talking about before I started, we were going to backfill all this, so backfilled all this. So now I'm going to move all this stuff out of the way and uh, then flatten that all out and then move the stuff over there. Here's the old dump truck. It's an F8, if you're curious. And I didn't really guys show you guys the uh, payloader, old payloader from the 70s, straight frame. Uh, I think it's two yard bucket. Uh, it's old, been used. Uh, still has one of the panels on the side of it. It's pretty beat up though the uh, they had the old I don't know how they started it but they used a kerosene or something in there pumped it up It's pretty, pretty wore out machine. You can see somebody, at some point, rolled it, or broke that, and then rewelded it. They even rewelded it right there. I'll show you my other old international TD9. It's also pretty wore out. I've replaced the sprockets on this, we did a lot of welding on it. But it's a gas over diesel. Starts on a little tank of gas, and you uh, push that lever in and switches over to diesel. But we put, uh, we put dozer gears in this, lowered the gear ratio, or actually I guess raised the gear ratio. That's also a pretty used up machine. Anyways, so there you go. You can use old equipment to take down a hillside. Now I got all I got left is this little berm right here. Yeah, it doesn't have any leaks. It looks like it's doing pretty good. I had to redo all those pins. one track that still needs to be the track tensioner needs to be seals replaced but it's doing all right and there's our little male dog